What is up guys and welcome back to Animation Station. Today we are going to be learning about motion tweening inside of Krita. Uh, I did an older video about it before and uh, it was uh, it was pretty good but at the same time it needed to be explained a little bit better so we're going to do that today. So we have our car here which we just drew and what we're going to do is we are going to animate this car moving. The car itself actually will not move. We're only going to make the background move so the background will be moving. The car will be staying in one position. The wheels, as you can see, I drew them on a separate layer. Every time the car goes over a bump, uh, the wheels, it, they will go up, up and down. So it will bring it uh, more to life. And also we're gonna animate the wheels to look like they're turning. So these, these wheels will just be going up and down on a, uh, a loop and turning on the loop the car will be staying in the same spot and the background will be moving we're going to actually motion tween the background so that it looks like the car is moving so now that we got that in play what we're going to do now is bring in our background and uh, we'll get started okay so we imported our background which was really just uh, a picture so here's our background we added some shadows as you can see there um, we also put the car in a group so if you see here that little arrow comes down the cars in the group and we did a bunch of things to the car so we added this uh, let's start at the bottom we added a shadow so as you can see there's a shadow for the car uh, this is the body of the car these are the wheels which are separate because we animated them and then we have the lights which are front and back and we also have this thing called a shine I put on there. If you zoom in here, you can see it nice and easy. The shine is there. When we press play, the shine of the car moves just to kind of give it that movement. So if we press play, here's what we actually have so far. So, and remember, this is not with the background moving as you'll see. So if we hit play there, the car is moving, the wheels are moving up and down, the shine is going by, which means the car is passing something, and it looks really realistic. Now, what we need to do is add a motion tween so that the background can also move. So we're going to actually zoom out a little bit here, and we're going to go to our background. Make sure all other uh, layers are locked so that we don't make any mistakes. The BK standing here is the background that we're gonna be dealing with. We're going to press this little arrow here, or you can even right click the background, and we're going to say uh, add. We're actually going to add a, for this one it would be a transform mask. So in order to do a motion tween, you have to do a transform mask. You're just gonna go ahead and click that, and it puts it on a separate layer. So let's bring this up here so you guys can see it. And we have our transform mass so we have our body still which is here which is locked oh sorry we're gonna make that go up we have our background here which is uh what we're working with and then we have the transform mask right underneath it so that's what we opened up now you're already on layer zero so the very first layer here uh, so in order to do a motion tween what you need to do is you have to switch to animation curves which is this selection up here so you have your timeline for animation and you have animation curves animation curves if you don't know how to get it you just go to settings you go to show dockers or sorry that takes off the dockers you go to settings you go to dockers and you'll see i have a check mark on animation curves and timeline animation timeline you can go ahead and remove these if you want so say you don't want to see the uh, animation curves you can just go ahead and click that and it will go away but for now we are going to be using it to do our uh, motion tween. I call it a motion tween just because of the old CS3 animation platforms. Uh, it's kind of the same uh, idea. Now it is, it does seem complex if you don't know what you're doing, but it's very, very simple. So we would go over to animation curves and we're already, as you can see, on layer zero. So it's got this big orange line here. That means we're on layer zero and we already know we're under the background. So if you look back up here, uh, we're in the right place. So we're going to be adding a transform mask to this background. Then what you want to do is you want to select this little guy. It's like a dot in the middle with a, ang uh, a dash and a plus sign. I'm just going to hover over it so you can see the name. I'll read it out to you. So it says adds keyframe to control scalar property. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click that once. Boom. It automatically uh, adds it to this zero keyframe or what you can call zero to one keyframe as well. And then what you want to know is exactly how many frames this animation is going for, which is super important and it keeps things tidy. So you see if we go up here, so we're gonna go back to animation timeline. We're gonna go up here to the right 
and it says these this is basically our, our clip end and clip starts for clip end we want to change this so it says 110 frames we're just going to keep it simple and make it 100 frames there we go now that we have 100 frames on our animation we can go back to animation curves and we're still if you look up top under the transform mask for the background or bk and we're going to scroll over all the way till we see 100 at the top 90 100 so right here is 100 where my uh, mouse is we're going to click that and you're literally going to click that same button the one that says adds keyframe to control scalar property it's the slash with the dot and the plus sign gonna hit, hit that one more time and now you have a green line blue line red line uh, don't worry about all these lines they can be a little bit confusing what you're gonna do now is since we are we're adding this position so this is a new position or a new keyframe now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on background which is exactly what we want to animate right the transform mask is here we're just gonna select our selection tool and you'll notice you see I don't know if you guys can see that really well but there's a big square box around our background because this background is humongous right so I put in a larger background than the canvas remember in Krita the canvas is basically your camera because they don't have a camera option so your canvas is your camera and that's why if you've been following my other stuff uh, I use Filmora to to basically uh, I use it as a camera uh, in some instances, depending on what the scene is for the Malay and Tiger uh, series. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the shift button. We're going to take this background and we're going to move it all the way over. So this is going to make it look like the car is moving. You can already see that it makes it look like that. And we're going to go, we're going to drag that background right to the end. You see, that's the stopping point. So I'll show you that a little bit more. You see, there's no more background left. So we're going to move it right to there and we're going to let go and literally guys that's it so if we go back to our animation timeline you'll see that there's a star here at the beginning so uh, can you guys see that there there's a little star here at the first keyframe and then if you look over here at the very end there's another star here as well showing that there is a motion tween in place if you hit play the background should now move you see that that is pretty darn awesome so let's scroll in a little bit more See if we can see it a little bit better. Now that with the tires bobbing, it doesn't look so out of place. It actually looks like it's meant to be, right? And the reflection of the car looks like it's meant to be as well. Uh, very, very cool. So that's how you would do a, just a regular motion tween or how you would basically allow a background to pan while you're doing an animation. The car is not moving. Um, only the background is moving. The car just looks like it's moving and the background is even looping. So, you know, it's even almost hard to see where it starts and where it stops. So that could come in handy for a short animation that you may be doing. Okay. So that's it for today. The very last thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to render this. So we're going to hit stop on that We're going to go to file and go to render animation. And we're gonna go ahead and open this up and we're just gonna save it to our documents folder. Let's go to Krita here, Motion Tween, that's a great name. Just hit save and okay. And then we're gonna open it up and look at it. So we're gonna go ahead and let that load and I'll be right back when it's done. All right, it's all done. Let's go ahead and find that file, documents, Krita. Should be right on the first one here somewhere. Let's expand that. Da, 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 da. We're looking for motion tween. There it is. And we want to look at the video file. Let's take a peek. There it is. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Let's hit play one more time. There you go. Now that looks like a car is kind of bobbing along there. Now, obviously you could put a lot more detail into that but uh, that's just an example of how to motion tween in Krita. If you haven't already, uh, hit that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy these uh, animations and learning how to use this platform. It is a free platform. Most animation platforms you have to subscribe to. Uh, so it's completely free. Make sure to check out the uh, series we're working on right now, uh, our animation series, The Himalayan Tiger. And as always, thanks so much for your support. And you guys take care and enjoy your day. Cheers. Bye.